terrain is rough, dusty, unpaved roads, much like what Jesus had to walk in Palestine. And they walk for miles in order to visit their patients. I asked one, why do you do it? And her response was, I do it because I feel that God has placed it within me to do it. To watch these individuals as they were taking care of these people that she talked about and her eyes would sparkle and she kept saying, I have to be here, you know, I'm their only hope. Oh, my brother. How are you? Pleasure. Pleasure Welcome you. to South Africa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Paul Mawela and his wife, Martha, came here retired, and they had a burden to do ministry, okay. wanted to start a church. It didn't work out. Uh, the locals felt that they had enough churches. How are you? Fine. Good. And when I couldn't start a church, the Lord impressed upon me that we could do something. We, in which we could work together. Alvin is my name. He got together with some of the local pastors and said, look, we have a common enemy. And so putting aside denominational lines, they've come together to fight the AIDS epidemic here in South Africa. The project is called Nsengelo, a Tsonga name for standing together against an enemy, to fight against enemy HIV and AIDS. When we arrived on Tuesday morning, uh, we met 25 or 30 women, and we found out that they were called caregivers, and that they visited homes of uh, some HIV patients, tuberculosis patients. What would happen to them? We sat down with them, we met with them, interviewed them, and they shared with us what they did every day. And Martin said, I have 105 people I visit every day. I said, week? She said, no, every day I visit 105 people. I said, what about you? The lady said, well, I have 124 that I visit every day. How do you go? By feet, not automobile. And I said, wow, I know you're kidding. I said, no, we do it every day. How much education is there? We asked the caregivers, how did you find these people? How did you find the people? And they said, door to door. They walked door to door, knocking on the doors and looking for individuals that needed help. And they actually entered into the lives of people by going there and, and seeking out the needs of those who had been afflicted by AIDS. They are the ones who lay hands on them in a very real way. They touch lives, they mingle with the people, they get to know them and they minister to their needs. At Nklengelo, we have 40 caregivers. Those are the people who visit the homes, make sure they know how many sick people and from what are they suffering from. Sometimes they have to clean the house where the patient is sleeping, do some washing for the patient, change the bedding, bathe the patients. Offer them care, compassion, and to just to see to their well-being. Uh, it's really a, a, a mission of mercy, a mission of love that they demonstrate on a daily basis. We had the privilege of visiting homes. I don't know how the other members of my group felt, but I felt a measure of apprehension and concern going into the home. I didn't know what I was going to encounter there. Where we went, the lady couldn't walk and her joints were stiff and, and the caregiver just massaged her ankles and her feet and, and her arms wherever there was pain. Cleaning their homes, cleaning their wounds, their sores, uh, administering their medications. They see these individuals not as pure victims. They see them as individuals created in the image of God and they treat them as such. Their commitment to their patients that they see was just unbelievable. 
They knew everything about those families, the names of their children, the ages of their children. They could tell you everything about those individuals. The caregivers are not paid. They are given a stipend of 500 rand a month only. That is not enough for the type of work they're doing. When I learned that they'd volunteer their services, that they were giving completely of themselves. Walking two, three hours in one direction and then two, three hours back home just to go visit individuals um, who, are, who are sick. When I watch the way they give of themselves and touch the people, hug the people, they were not um, concerned about themselves. That's ministry. <laughs> On Tuesday afternoon, we got to meet with the children. They've just come from school, and we got the opportunity to mingle with them and to get to know some of their stories and get to understand where they're coming from. And what's your name? The children that come to Engelo are orphans. Their parents have passed away as a result of AIDS. We call them child-headed homes. These children live by themselves. The eldest one needs to take the initiative. They have to act as mother and father, nine and ten years old, and head of the household, that you have to provide for your little brothers and sisters. What grade are you in? Five. I sat down when was about five little boys and then talked to them. The common language that we had was laughter. And they made me laugh. And they all made me laugh. Oh, you can't do that. Oh. <laughs> It was a wonderful experience to be able to serve all the children in Engela. And to see these children standing on line, waiting so patiently, and they would all say thank you. You know, they were just so grateful. So, you know, it's, I don't know, it's just something else. I was surprised to find how happy the kids were in spite of their situation. They were entertaining us a whole lot and I, I was taken up with what they were doing and I thought the kids needed to have some enjoyment themselves. That was a special moment for me. And I really thought my ministry should have been to them, but their ministry was to me. And I appreciated the experience of seeing the joy in their eyes of just being cared for by our presence. had this incredible gathering together in this tent out in the very rural setting and people packing in from all sides. And in the midst of all this, the whole purpose was to dedicate this church. One of the things that I was impressed with is the interpreter on that day. He is a pastor of a non-Adventist church and Papa Muella had developed such a bond with these pastors that he invited them to come to the worship experience. Following the service, we, we left the tent and went to this new building there that the people in the community were just absolutely thrilled with. We would love to say thank you so very much to Pastor and Mrs. Mawila for this church building. To see the community involved in the dedication yesterday and to listen to how the chief of the village asked him, okay, you've done all this work in Angela, feeding orphans and literacy and taking care of patients. When are you going to build your church? This was an area where our church had not previously been welcomed 
but here were community leaders not only welcoming us to the area, but they were even admonishing the community individuals to come to church, come to Sabbath school, bring your children, be on time, because this church is the church for the community. After that service, seven souls were baptized. The way that our pioneers used to do it, down by the, uh, the riverside. It was a moving experience, wonderful to behold, and uh, the joy of salvation on the faces of those who, who took their stand for Christ. I think that Ngelo is important to the Hope for Humanity initiative because it epitomizes the very best and the most sincere of, uh, of our hopes and our desire to replicate the, um, the ministry and the love of Jesus Christ. I believe that Pastor and Mrs. Mawela are ambassadors of heaven. They're God's ambassadors. They're not about anything or anybody but the people that they serve. Now that I've been here, I've come to see that there's a lot of work to be done, that people are here sacrificing, giving all that they have to give comfort and relief to people. The work that they're doing would be what, what Jesus would do if he was here walking the earth right now. He would go from house to house comforting, praying, doing whatever he could. I saw Jesus in the faces of the children. I saw him in the hands of the caregivers. I saw him in the patients as they looked back at their caregivers. I saw him more clearly than I think I've ever seen him before. In this partnership, there's nothing that we can give back to the church except our hearts, except our prayers, except our thanks. That's all we can give. But I am looking forward to a time when the Lord will come and there will be a great harvest of souls from this part of the world because of the partnership that we have had with Hope for Humanity.